Hello, 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 and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation. And today we are continuing a study that we have started in the book of Psalms, and we're on Psalm 119. We're in section 17, Psalm 119. And section 17 uh, has the word pay, P-E, pay, as the Hebrew word that's listed uh, for the pronunciation and for the actual subtitle of this section. So it's pay and it's, it's spelled with a P-E and it is defined as uh, meaning like the mouth, okay? And it is the uh, letter of the Hebrew alphabet, 17 of course, because this is section 17. And then uh, it has a numerical value of 8. But what we want to we want to stay focused on is the defining definition of it. It's defined as uh, mouth, okay. And this section is going to give us uh, a little bit of a backdrop onto that as we go into it and start reading it. Okay, so we're going to start at verse one twenty nine. He says, "Thy testimonies are wonderful, and therefore does my soul keep them." The interest of thy words gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. And I opened my mouth and painted. Listen to what he says. I opened my mouth and painted. You know, you, you paint a picture with your mouth is what he's saying. So for I long for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me. As thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. And order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, and so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Now this is what, again, we know that this is a person who is in covenant with God. He is, this person is a part of God's kingdom, and we too can actually petition God this prayer from this section regarding the mouth and how he can increase, our, you know, we can increase our praise of them, you know, out of our mouth, you know. So he goes on to tell us here, make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. And rivers of waters run down my eyes because I keep, because they keep not thy law. Okay, so uh, again, this uh, writer of this section, but he could be the writer of all the other sections also, but we're just going to focus on this particular uh, subject that he has given us to focus on, and that is the mouth and the Heavenly Father has a lot to say about you know the mouth and how uh, he controls the mouth okay and then he also gave us an example of how Moses you know when Moses was ordered to speak by God uh, let's see over Exodus we're going to go over there and taking the verse that we're going to uh, elaborate on this verse 131 I opened my mouth <coughs> and painted Okay, painted. Now, and that could be <clears throat> that could be defined many different ways, but usually when you open your mouth, you know, you really do paint a picture, and uh, because you you say a vision, you know, a vision is a picture of something. It just that happens. Okay, and we get visions from God. He paints a picture, you know, and visions in in the night whenever He gives us dreams, telling us something or. Revealing something, however he may do it, he paints a picture with that, and that's coming from his mouth. Okay, so um, we're going to use that verse to actually talk about, it. and we're going to go into Exodus uh, chapter four, and uh, this is the book, and in this chapter, where God was speaking to Moses, you know, because Moses thought that he couldn't speak, and you know, eloquently enough. For, you know, to be a spokesperson for God, but God explained to him. So if we go into chapter 4, he tells us, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, 
I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since uh, thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and out of a slow tongue. So he's saying, you know, I, I, I can't speak real fast or, you know, I don't speak real, you know, real good. And so the Lord said to him, but who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I? The Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, the holy, holy God of heaven. He's saying, so now therefore go and I will, I will be thy mouth and teach thee what you should say. Hallelujah. He said, I will be thy mouth and teach thee what to say. And he said, oh, my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou you know, want to sin. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he comes forth to meet thee. And when he sees thee, he will be glad in his heart. Now he's talking about now, this is what God is telling Moses to go and do and meet Aaron, and this is what's going to happen when he meets Aaron. He says, And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in your hand and thou shalt do signs with it. Now this is what God is saying to Moses. Okay, in reference to him being a leader over the children of Israel in the Old Testament when God, you know, first uh, instructed Moses, the Hebrew baby that was found in the river, Egyptian. Uh, and so he was chosen by God, you know, to be the leadership over the children of Israel. And he thought he couldn't speak, you know, well enough in order for God to actually, you know, speak what needed to be said to them and given them direction. So God told him what to do in this particular, uh, in what we just read. And actually, you can read the whole chapter. It gives you more insight into what and how God did, you know, teach Moses and how he actually chose Moses, Jeremiah. We're going to go into Jeremiah also. And he always used that rod, you know, he always tell him to look at, you know, with a rod, hallelujah, Jesus, holy God. So, you know, he says something when he tells you, uh, you, see, or you see yourself with a rod and a vision or something, God's going to use your leadership. So, however, because that's what happened with Moses and it also happened with Jeremiah. And we just read about it with Moses and you can go into more detail if you would like to in this particular uh, chapter 4 of Exodus and it goes into it but nevertheless what we want to stay focused on is what God says he says I, you, thou shalt speak unto him to Aaron and put words in his mouth now this is how God is transferring his spirit all around and he's explaining it to Moses how I'm going to get what needs to be said through you in the earth okay and I'm going to speak to the earth and he's going to do it do you know how he's telling him he said, now be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. That's talking about Aaron. And he shall be, even he shall be to you instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. Okay. So instead of him being, uh, he's going to be a mouth to Moses. He's telling you. Okay. And then he says, and thou shalt to be to him a God, okay, and you're going to be a God to, to, to express the uh, the will of God in the earth and, and to the rest of the people also as God, you know, reveals it unto them and unto him and then he says, thou shalt take this rod in your hand and see there's that rod okay, so um, so that's one chapter and one person, Moses and chapter o, and, uh, one book Exodus of an illustration of God and how he uses the mouth to express his and to reveal himself in the earth and it's through of course always by his spirit because that's exactly how he's explaining it right here
to Moses and then he's going to give us another example uh, let's see if we go over into Jeremiah I'm going to stay in the Old Testament for a minute so Jeremiah one is it let's see Jeremiah <clears throat> Yeah, it is chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, you know, when God first began to speak to Jeremiah and explain to him. And he says here in, uh, and you can start at the beginning of this chapter also. He said, and I'm going to skip around Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Is what God is saying to Jeremiah. And so he says, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send you, and whatsoever I command you, you shall speak it, he said. Okay, uh, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, is what Jeremiah said. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. This is what Jeremiah was saying, the prophet, when the Lord came to him and spoke unto him regarding him being a prophet unto the nations and how he's going to speak and say what thus says the Lord, from him be his messenger, his mouthpiece in the earth. Okay, so uh, another vessel. Well, those are the two vessels we have. Well, of course, Christ Jesus. We can go over into uh, Luke or we'll start at Matthew we'll go ahead because that's the first book we just start right here at Matthew 12 because we know that Christ Jesus was the ultimate mouthpiece of God in, that came to earth chapter 12 and he uh, and you can start at verse 25 through 37 but the key verses uh, we want to focus in on is what uh, Jesus Christ says regarding the mouth and that's going to be verse 34 he called this generation a certain generation of people that was listening to him speak regarding the kingdom of God and they were opposing him so he calls them a generation of vipers and he says how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak okay now these were people who did not believe in God okay and again he used the word this is Christ because he's speaking in red and where he calls them vipers and he uh, tells them out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things so I say to you that every word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment for by your words thou shalt be justified and by the words thou shalt be condemned by your words you be justified and by your words shall you be condemned now this is what Christ Jesus is saying regarding words and the mouth and thing, the words come out of the mouth And what words they do come out. And again, we want to take notice to the verse 34, where Christ is speaking to when he's talking about what's coming out of the mouth. Okay, coming out of the heart. Because only those that have given their heart to Christ can bring forth heaven's words, the message of heaven out of their mouth. Okay, that's the main point we want to grasp. In what Christ is saying in this particular parable as he begins to no, it's not really a parable it's him actually just uh, making a statement to a group of people and he wants to get across the importance of the heart and how the heart if you haven't given your heart to God there's there's no way you can bring forth good fruit out of your heart because it has not the Holy Spirit which is the good fruit giver the good proof bringer into the earth and um, so we just want to make sure we grasp that concept because again he was talking to people who had not been converted into the kingdom 
you being evil, he says, speak good things out of the abundance of your of the heart. The mouth speaks, okay? So another example we want to take a look at, and we're focusing in on the mouth, okay, and how God uses the mouth to, to bring forth his presence, his will into the earth, and his ways of how they should be done. Okay, the New Testament, Mark, the Gospel, we're going to stay here in the Gospels, Mark 7, is where we're going to go next with this. Mark chapter 7 and then verses 24 to 35 is the actual uh, verses we want to key into. And this is where the woman was asking to, for her child to be healed. And she and her child were not, again, people that were a part of God's kingdom. They were, had heard about Christ Jesus. They knew, and, he, and then uh, they saw Jesus. And we're right here in chapter 7 in the book of Mark. And verse 27, he says, Jesus said to her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meat. It's not good to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. This is a paraphrasing because he's talking about two people outside of the kingdom of God, and which would be considered dogs. And he's referred to that many occasions that those who have not been converted into the kingdom uh, were, con you know, considered to be dogs. And so, but those in the kingdom were, you know, the children of God. So then. Uh, He was making that illustration again because she wanted healing for her child and the child and the woman again they were not a part of god's kingdom but what we want to basically uh keep focusing in on the mouth and what jesus christ is saying because and how the power of the holy spirit controls the mouth because this child could not speak okay not only could the child not hear the child couldn't speak but when christ laid his hands upon her it says right here, verse 31, again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Uh, let me go back up. Because it, the verses that we want to make sure we keep in contrast for this is verse 24 through 35. Okay, so verse 29 says, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is going out of thy daughter. Okay, and when she was come to the house, she found the devil going out and her daughter laid upon the bed. So, going over, I'm skipping verses, going around, verse 32, and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impotent in his speech. And they beseeched him to put his hand upon him. And he put, he took it aside from him, multiple, the multitude of people. He put his fingers in his, into his ears, and he spit, and touched his tongue, and looked up to heaven, and he sighed, and said unto him, Ephatha, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly, okay? So there we see right here a healing done by Christ Jesus to a child who could not speak. So again, we're looking at how the power of the Holy Spirit controls the mouth. And in this particular uh, reading, we see Christ Jesus opening the mouth of a, a child that was dumb. What they, you know, what we could refer to as dumb, because they could, they were mute. They didn't, they weren't able to uh, speak out of their mouth, and He was able to heal them. Okay, so then, let me see here. Then we're going to go over here and take a look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35. And you can read the whole chapter. But we're going to just talk about uh, how in the Lord, what he does. And this is a small chapter, actually, uh, for those converted into his kingdom, for those that are a part of his kingdom. It says, say to them that are of a fearful heart. Uh, like I said, the whole chapter, but I'm not going to go into reading the whole chapter, but I'm going to read verse 4. He says, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come, your God will come with vengeance. 
even God with a recompense, and he will come and save you. Then, when he saves you, he says, the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the deserts. So he tells us right here, the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Whenever the Lord shows up with vengeance, when he comes with his hand to help, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, then will the one that has not been able to open up their mouth will be able to sing, speak, and do all and say all through the power of the anointing because it will break the yoke of bondage that is trying to press that mouth closed and the Lord wants to open it so that he can have it, receive praises from it. Reverence and honor in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God bless you, and uh, this is going to bring us to the conclusion of the study regarding Psalm 119 and uh, section 17 in the mouth, hallelujah, how the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, will open up the mouth to speak forth that which says the heavens, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, and see you on the next Bible study.